You're listening to Tough City Radio, 99.5 CIMM in Euclid and 90.1 CHMZ in Tofino, West Coast Radio. That's true. Uh, that's exactly what's going on. I love a day like today for a variety of reasons. And I'm figuring out my little tech stuff. There you go. Got it. Uh, what is brewing in the biosphere? Today's October 11th, obviously, 2023, Wednesday. And uh, I like to talk about this because we've been talking about so many things that are going on around our uh, on the coast and around our town. What's Brewing in the Biosphere is a show that we have begun. This is the second installment. And my guests are Rebecca Hurwitz and Colin Robinson from the Clackwet Biosphere Trust. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning, Cam. Nice to see you. Rebecca, you've been here before. Colin, you've been in a long time ago. It's been a while. Yeah, it's good to be back. Nice to see you. Nice to see you, too. Things are good? Yeah, I can't complain. Just moving along, enjoying fall. Enjoying the weather. I say get it while it's hot. Absolutely. There's a little bit of dampness coming down the pipe. Oh, yeah. I mean, you know, to be expected. And I actually look forward to it quite a bit. I'm enjoying the kind of pace of, of uh, the coast right now. Would you agree to that, Rebecca? Yeah, it feels calmer. Yeah, it's a little, a little calmer. <laughs> calmer in the communities. And yeah, it's been nice to have those rains and it's good for the fish. Yeah. Good for the the water reservoirs, all those things. I've been blown away um, by, and I'm happy about this. I, this is not a complaint. But man, is the town of Tofino ever ripped up right now, right? Look at the giant holes out front there. Constant activity with tractors and giant trucks and drilling and exploding. But it's all for such a great reason, right? It's going to be beautiful when it's all done. Yeah, absolutely. And we need that wastewater treatment plant. So short-term pain for some long-term gain here. Absolutely. Um, there's a bunch of stuff to talk about. and But how about since we're, we're saying hi. Colin, what's going on with you? What do you want to talk about today? I want to talk about neighborhood small grants. That's just the start. Yeah, absolutely. I'd be happy to dive right into that. It's Let's one of my it. favorite parts of the job. Well, and then I, I, I was talking to my wife, and we have had so many great experiences with the small grants. And my friend Louisa was just in here, and she's been a recipient. So many, so many people have been. So let's, uh, let's do it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, okay, sure. Well, neighborhood small grants are one of my favorite types of grants that CBT does. Probably one of my favorite types of grants I've ever seen. And one of the reasons why I like it is that anybody can apply. It's totally meant to be easy. They're small, so it's not an overwhelming amount of work you have to do. It can just help be a little extra support to make an initiative happen that you'd maybe been wanting to do anyways, but you've just been putting off. Um, so it's meant to really allow anybody with an idea to build community or, you know, make something fun happen in their neighborhood um, to bring that dream to fruition. Do you need to do it at the time you're going to, for example, I'm looking on the website, which is clackwitbiosphere.org forward slash grants. There's a 2023 funding timeline, which is September 15th. Applications close October 30th. If I want to do something in July, I have to still hit this, right? Yeah, ideally you would apply now and you don't have to spend the money right away. You could wait till July if it was something that relied on the season. Like say you wanted to do a, a harvest of a plant that was only blooming at a certain time of year. That'd right. be totally fine. Um, so yeah, like you mentioned, apply by October 30th. Okay. The amount is small. It's up to $500. So usually it just funds sort of like an event or a one-off thing, or it could be a series of gatherings. And the theme around the grants, each year we try to have uh, a theme. We do it in the spring and in the fall. The fall grants this year are themed around culture. So anything that can bring sort of cultural practices alive. What we see here is a lot of New Channels culture grants. Um, mm -hmm. it's, it's definitely a focus of these grants. Though, if you have an idea that's, you know, cultural in a different sense, we definitely still encourage you to apply. Is there anything that people might like for example that you just say that's not for this um because you don't say no a lot no we st we start from a place of yes so that's yeah. what the committee yeah, yeah. always does so you really don't need to be nervous about applying for one of these grants it's definitely the, the practice is try to fund as many as possible i would say things that are to do with directly raising funds or associated with a business or uh, an organized charity um, these are sort of the ones we, we steer away from. It's meant to be just as, as individual-led as possible. We do sometimes see people doing something that might be, you know, associated with their organization or business. But we say, when you apply, please try to keep it at arm's length, not associated affiliate with 
with your organization, meant to be as grassroots right. as possible. Can we talk about... Uh, sorry, I I'm sometimes get distracted by how loud the tractor is. Can we talk <laughs> about some of your favorite examples over the years? Rebecca, too. Like uh, I know like Louisa did a crystal workshop for kids. Uh, there have been lots of uh, block parties, which I've really appreciated. At first, I was like, I don't know. Is that a good way to spend that money? But after then attending, I realized, wow, this really is bringing people out and bringing people together. And I think that would be a real big goal. Absolutely. It, right? Building community, building connection. Yeah, one uh, event that sticks out for me is a roller skating event that was in Eucula <laughs> quite a few years ago. And just when roller skating was sort of coming back. And yep. uh, yeah, just so fun to see folks get out and uh, skate around, have fun, the face painting, the black the music, pearls. all that stuff. Yeah. That's so fun. How about you, Colin? Oh, man. I think one of the ones that stuck out in my mind, this was before we even had the culture grants focus. It was just a regular neighborhood small grant. Um, it was uh, Dwayne Martin. He was involved in uh, uh, seeking out a tree to carve a chuppets from. Um, I think it was actually up north, maybe in Heshkwit territory. But he linked up with the hot wear there, and they did a bunch of cool ceremony around the tree. And um, I don't know if it actually ended up. I don't. The tree maybe didn't have the right qualities for a canoe, but it did enable like a really cool gathering and learning and community event, which I, I thought that was really cool. I you know I saw a video about it, got really inspired. I don't think I actually even worked for CVT yet at that time. Right. I just remember thinking, wow, that's cool. And fast forward a few years, we have a whole culture grants specific NSG to support that kind of thing. You you said I think I heard you say that there could be a series of gatherings. So let's say someone wanted to do three neighborhood block parties they don't have to take all they don't have to apply for five hundred dollars they might apply for less and how does that work with a grant let's talk about the filling out the the grant process so people can understand before they look it up yeah sure yeah so you could you could run a series of gatherings if you wanted to make like a euchre night or something um i mean we're trying to stick more towards culture this stream around and definitely the focus is around building more inclusive communities i just want to while we're talking about block parties and you know yeah, that kind of thing. Um, but yeah, it could definitely be a series of events. The way you apply is you go to the CBT website, navigate to the grants tab, and neighborhood small grants should be the first thing that you see at the top of the list of grants um, to apply for right now. And you just follow the links through the website, and there is a, a separate website that you have to apply on. Um, and it's not it's not that complicated. Just follow the links via the CBT website. But we also really, really encourage you to reach out to us directly if right. applying online is a bit of a, a burden or you just don't feel like it or you're not near a computer, you can just call the CBT office and one of our staff will be happy to take your application over the phone. That, that's something that I have personally experienced. I think many people have. You're very friendly and very forward facing and uh, it, you make it easy for people. Awesome. That's the goal. The door is always open. Yeah. yeah. Um, so people have to do this. They need to consider it now because the grant deadline's coming, right? October 30th at 11.59 p.m., right before lunch on that day. And uh, when it says applications open September 15th, oh, so they're already open, and then you just have to have it done by that day. And that's for the year, right? Like October 30th, they have them in for the, that's for the whole next year. There will be next. another round in the spring. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Got we do so a spring and, and fall intake, but folks thanks, always have a year to, to complete their project, and we're flexible even with that, so okay. things so, need to and, take longer. And I'm fascinated, if you can answer this in, in whatever way you can, where does the money come from for you like oh, when well, you're giving this money away? How do you get that money? Yeah, in, in part, it's from the CBG budget, but we also have an amazing uh, partnership with the Vancouver Foundation, and they were actually the, the sort of origin of neighborhood small grants, and that's something that we saw as being successful uh, in greater Vancouver and wanted to bring to our region. So we've been able to partner with them for many, many years and then even grow the program. So then now there's a neighborhood small grant network across Vancouver Island, and uh, CBG, the awesome Brookwood, is the co-lead of that network along with staff from the Victoria Foundation. So, um, yeah, it's just awesome to build that momentum and build one what we've learned here and be able to spread that across the island. That should just be Brooke's name. <laughs> yeah. The awesome Brookwood. <laughs> and she should be, she shall be introduced by that from henceforth. Uh, this is called What's Brewing in the Biosphere. Uh, I'm going to play a song and then we're going to come right back with Rebecca Hertz and Colin Robson. If you have a question, you can text me at 250 
266-3134. I'm going to play one song, and uh, we'll be right back. What's brewing in the biosphere? I think that's funny. I'm going to write a fun jingle for the beginning of our show, by the way. Amazing. Thank you, Cam. Yeah, well, it won't be strange brew because no, nothing strange is going on. It's all legit. And speaking of that, I realize uh, because I'm so familiar with what you do and the organization, somebody listening who might not live here or they might just be visiting might not know. So can we go back to the beginning and would you please explain what it is that you do? Absolutely. Thank yep. you. The Cloudcoat Biosphere Trust, we're the organization that uh, is most closely linked to the UNESCO Biosphere designation. So uh, our region was designated a biosphere in 2000 after the local nation, the nations and local communities came together to uh, seek out that designation. And it's a way of uplifting our values around shared, uh, <clears throat> around sustainable development, uh, reconciliation and biodiversity conservation. We're also the local community foundation, so that's the grant-making piece. Right. And we're the only organization in Canada that is both of those things, and that's our, our secret sauce. Well, it's awesome what you do, and I know so many people personally that have benefited as well as organizations. And I don't, I wanna, we'll move from grants in a second and get to vital sense, but I just wanted to talk about the sort of the bigger grants, the UNESCO Indigenous Languages Grants. Is that what it's called? Uh, yeah, well, language grants are one of our newer grants. And uh, yeah, we have a range of grants from the neighborhood small grants is like 50, sm as small as $50 yeah. up to vital grants. Uh, and the Biosphere Research Award are $20,000. Wow. Uh, arts and Culture, 5,000 Community Development Grant, 5,000 Research and Environment, Youth and Education. This, it's just amazing what you're offering. Yeah, we try to be all-encompassing and really support uh, community and ecosystem initiatives. If people don't know where their request might fit the best, I would say that's when they should come in and, and hang out with you and you'll guide them to the right place. Yeah, absolutely. Connect with any of the staff. And uh, yeah, that's the thing. Not everything fits into a category. And we're trying to change the grants to be more inclusive and more flexible, just moving in a more pr progressive direction, not being so like, here's the criteria. Tell us right. how your grant fits it. Right. And being more responsive to the people who are on the ground doing the work. So yeah, just come talk to us. Do you give out your full capacity of grants all the time or are, are there or do you kind of want more people to come? Uh, we are really amazed by the number of ideas and initiatives that there are in the region. So we are always fully subscribed. OK, uh, I'm happy to hear that. Right. Yeah, it's great news. It's absolutely granting is a big focus in the spring. And so in January is usually when we open up our grant streams and then we'll hold open houses and uh, share. We'd love to come in right. and talk yeah, about yeah. grant priorities, all of those things. I, I really like the language ones and the arts and culture. You know, I think it's really an important thing. And uh, we do our best here to invite as many people as we can to speak and learn. Absolutely. And as the local community foundation, we often try to be sort of the, the first to support an idea or maybe help to incubate a, a festival or an event or something like that. And it's amazing right. to see those grow over time and be sustained and attract funding from other sources. I'm so excited. And this is this is just me talking right now. But I did the first annual. We did the first annual San, uh, Sandcastle building contest. And I really see the potential for that to be. Ta I'm already bugging people about next year when I see them. Think about your Sandcastle. Cool. Now I'm now I'm focused on pumpkins, but <laughs> but that won't last too long. Uh, okay, let's move to vital signs. Yeah, it's a vital signs year for us. We are super yeah. pumped every two years, right? Well, that was the goal, but it's been a, a, a tricky last couple of years. We, yes. you know, COVID notwithstanding, and then we also didn't have a lot of new census data, and so it's actually been five years since we've released. Oh wow! Vital signs. So that's exciting. It's I remember the last one was a beautiful book. And it had all the like living wage and all that That's sort of right. stuff. That was great. I wonder what I did with my copy, but I don't need one because there's going to be a new one. We're going to get you a 2023 copy so in about excited. two weeks. That's so. great. Yeah, our team's been working hard all summer, gathering data, collaborating with tons of different local organizations and nations to try to get what's really going on in the area. Because one of the things that's challenging about the region is it's got such a small population, transient population, it just doesn't fit the mold. And so oftentimes census data doesn't give the full picture. So a big part of what our team does is connecting directly with people from health services, social services, environmental organizations, the First Nations, to try to get an accurate story in data of what's going on. I'm reading here to RCMP, Statistics Canada. The, the, you're getting uh, that information from a lot of places. How many people, do you go like eight communities? How, how wide is your reach? 
Absolutely. You try to get everybody. Regional regional approach. So as much as we can, we're gathering data from the nations, the communities, and yeah, like you say, so many different sources. People ask me all the time, like how many potential people could listen to the radio, right? And so I try to add up those communities. I come up with like 20,000. You think there's 20,000 people that live here on the coast? We're going to come in with that 2023 report and oh, you'll know yeah, exactly yeah. that. So you don't, you don't even know yet? Like, are you talking about yeah. you're just going to publishing or you don't even really know the final statistics? Oh, no, we do. But we've got to keep uh, some things <laughs> embargo. Yeah, keep it exciting. That. All right. Because I'm pretty excited to, to know those numbers pretty accurately. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you, and that's an example where okay. the census data isn't really that reliable. And so we're right. able to reach out to each of the nations and each. Uh, Can and, I ask and, you vague questions? Like, what's, your, what, what's something that you learned about? What's an exciting revelation? Well, I guess you don't have to say the revelation, but population, uh, finance, the tourism numbers. Do you delve into that? Like how many people actually come to visit or is that a tourism to Fino parks uh, consideration? Yeah, we get that information from parks, for example, and are able to graph it. And I think what's really interesting is to start to see those trends over time. So now this is our uh, 10 year 10 years of the vital signs program in our region. And so uh, we're able to look at some of that trend data and really have a sense of what's changing and what isn't. I would imagine that all the businesses um, on the coast would benefit greatly from this report, you know, learning who's coming here, who's spending money, who's spending more time. I think so. And uh, I think also uh, we hear a lot from the local nonprofits and organizations who are really uh, looking for data to help them understand that what they're seeing as the needs in the community and to apply for funding, uh, not just at the CBT, but out- outside of the region as well. And uh, it, it, let's talk about tracking progress towards the UN Sustainable Development Goals. What does that mean? Well, I mean, the UN Sustainable Development Goals are so broad and all-encompassing. So in in the past, like the main point of them, I think, is to draw the connection between what's going on on the ground in these really localized situations and how it's a part of a bigger picture. So it's important to remember that when we're dealing with all these various uh, challenges or issues or things going on in the area here, they are connected to bigger trends. And I think the point of the goals is to draw attention to those connections. And then in terms of measuring progress, you can look at how small actions here, whether that's to do with um, initiatives at the school, to do with youth and education, or um, you know, environmental monitoring or climate change action, how that plays into the broader, um, I guess, global movement towards solving these systemic challenges. Now, I mean, how effective are they? I'm, I'm the first to tell you, it's, it, it's more of like a public engagement and communication thing, I would say, than an actual tangible measuring quantifiable right. data. Um, but it's definitely a really important tool for connecting the local with the global. How many people in your organization, does everybody work on this a little bit? Or Colin, like, are you spearheading it? Rebecca, do you spearhead it? Is it a big crew? It's absolutely a team approach. And we're uh, super grateful to work with Adrian Mason again on this Ah, year's report. So she's uh, come back to uh, the vital science team over the course of the summer and been the lead author. And then a number of staff are helping in different theme areas and everybody's supporting with ideas and communication and open house. So this is kind of a big deal. It's pretty exciting when it all comes together because you've probably been working on it for a long time. It's absolutely exciting. We're excited to share it with the community. So we're just waiting to hear when we'll get the hard copies back from the publisher uh, and print, and then we'll know when our I, open house is. I was going to ask you that question. So you, you can tell me all that when you get the it. The week I'm, of the 23rd. I'm excited to know who did it, and because the art from the last time, I say the art, but how it was presented and how it looked was so great and you know easy to digest and beautiful to look at. Really cool. Yeah, Marion Slime has been our uh, designer as well, like again this year. So. Yeah, so it'll be uh, equally it'll be as awesome. lovely and awesome. Yeah. That's great. All right, I'm going to play. Do we want to talk about any more about Vital Signs specifically? Uh, not not other than to say that as soon as we know when we'll have those hard copies, we'll get you the info cams so and you're you going to share come it in, with right? listeners. We'll, we will come back and talk I'm, to I'm about already, just Vital Signs. I'm already excited All about this. Yeah. All right, I'm going to play uh, a, another On the Nose song and we'll be right back. All right, everywhere, signs, the signs. The maple tree out front is red and beautiful. And uh, this is my favorite time of year. Absolutely my favorite colors, all those things. What's your favorite season, Rebecca? You're on the spot. 
Well, I do love summer, but uh, the, those fall colors and these uh, sort of w- warm fall days have been lovely. Right? How about you, Colin? Oh, man, I, I like them all. I got to say, there's different parts of each that I like. Um, yeah. I've switched over the years. I used to love Christmas, but Thanksgiving is really one of my main. I love a, a holiday <laughs> where the kind of focus is gratitude. I really went for it this year. I wrote every day like uh, two pages of gratitude stuff, and it really helped me. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Maybe there's a grant. Anyway, speaking of something exciting and beautiful, let's talk about the Biosphere Center. Let's tell people what it is, talk about the process. Tell us all we need to know. Yeah, amazing. Uh, the Biosphere Center is a, a research and education hub that the CBT is in the process of developing uh, on the corner of Olson Road and Campbell. So uh, we own the piece of property there and we've been through the rezoning process and uh, all of the design work is complete. That's something that we're celebrating right now. We had an awesome open house in the spring or sort of just before summer yeah. and got a lot of great community feedback on the uh, initial design work. And then the design team has been hard at work over the summer and that's all all complete now so we're really excited to have reached that milestone and now we're in the process of awaiting exciting news from some federal and provincial granting programs right to support the build when do you find out about that well uh right now they say that no news is good news there isn't <laughs> both, both of my guests just started smiling ear to ear as if uh you know that's a a, a probably well asked question. Yes, that is uh, <laughs> definitely uh, top of my mind for sure. But the federal uh, program that we've applied to, they won't tell us when the decisions will come. Right. But uh, they are in the process of reviewing applications. Could be, it could be a month. It could be six months. Like that. Uh, it shouldn't be that long. It should be before uh, the holiday break or right. early in January. And so when you say that, that would mean that the shovels in the ground question that I would ask you next won't be determined until you know if you get the grants. Yeah, exactly. We want to ensure that we have. The the, uh, the whole sort of fun- right. funding together before we start getting shovels in the ground. But uh, so we've applied for $7.2 million from the federal government. So we're just, a, that's a big piece of the puzzle. What's the overall budget? Yeah, it's a $15 million project. So you have half of that already? Uh, no, we uh, are working on that government funding primarily. And so the federal piece is 7.2. Uh, we're working through the provincial budget process and they've made a provincial budget committee has made a recommendation to support the project with $5 million, which is exciting, but wow. it still has to go through the steps of the budget right. process. Right. And then uh, we have raised 1.8 of the four that we're seeking to raise uh, from uh, individual donors and foundations. Uh, do you have any thing coming up other than this current conversation where we remind people if they want to be a part of it let's tell them how if someone's listening right now and they think i would love to be a part of that and i happen to have an extra hundred thousand dollars how can they get a hold of you well they can absolutely reach out to call the cbt office email michelle <laughs> hall awesome michelle hall or i uh, and it, stop by the office and right. see the plans because we've got them out in the office and it's nice to just to get a closer look at the community spaces that we're envisioning right. so you also have a great little video which i shouldn't say oh, little yeah. video but I'll, I'll direct people to clackwitbiosphere.org and uh, you can check out the video for it awesome it's really yeah cool. you can do a fly through of the biosphere center yeah. So let's tell people what they can expect and what they can look forward to. Like, why are you doing this? Absolutely. Uh, it, in essence, we really want to uh, elevate the values of sustainable development and conservation in the region. So having a hub for those programs, uh, for organizations and researchers and educators who are working towards the UNESCO mandate uh, will help us to ensure that programs and events are have a home. Right. And including meeting spaces, places for cooking, I think we've talked Absolutely, about before. Absolutely, yeah. A culinary teach. teaching kitchen, which North Island College is really excited about. Uh, an elder's room, uh, classroom, and meeting room. There really isn't that right now, is there? Maybe the Legion, we used to do that sometimes. Yeah, but. we definitely need more public spaces. Uh, and when it comes to planning for events and programs, it's, uh, it's tricky to find a spot that's available, especially if you're, say, planning a, a longer event or a field school, something like that and you need some dedicated classroom space. Yeah. Uh, that's what we're envisioning. And your new offices will be there, I'm assuming. Absolutely. We, we, and what, what might happen with your... The, the, the old business. Yeah, well, we're actually tenants there. And yeah. we've been tenants there for more than 10 years. So yeah. M- Mamook Development Corp owns the building. And uh, I'm sure they will envision a new future for it. Mamook. 
there's a name that I, I comes up for me a lot lately. Uh, Mamouk had a lot to do with the uh, the beginnings of the radio around Pete Moffat time. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. I didn't know that. I found that out by golfing with a friend. Cool. Who happened to say, I worked for them for many years. And I did this. And I was like, you know, that's, I just love, uh, we're talking about the numbers of people that I can't know that live here yet for another two weeks. <laughs> but after all the years I've lived here, like 20 plus, 22, whatever, I still meet fascinating, awesome people all the time that maybe I've run into, but then you, you, golfing or, you know, I like it that because you get four hours of dedicated time with someone. It's fascinating people's experience of being here and who they've worked with and who they know that you know. And yeah. it's so cool. Yeah. yeah. What a, well, and the, the gathering place uh, that is being built will be a place to facilitate those things. I love it. Absolutely. Yeah. We, we're excited to have the space to uh, be co-located with other organizations, be doing this work and just support community events. Two year program. Like once, once you get everything in place and the money, then maybe is think the build. Yeah. Two yeah, year the, build. yeah. We're actually saying 18 months uh, and we know we, that means things need to line up uh, yep. tightly. So yep. it's good, good to be realistic. And uh, the lot you already have, we are, you already said that. Yep. What else do we need to know about yeah, this? Yeah, the lot we have, we're working hard on the fundraising. Really, that's been our focus over the summer and into the fall. Um, a, a lot of folks think, uh, that why, why can't we take the funds from the Canada Fund, the endowment that the CBT manages? Right. But we really want to bring more resources to the region and be able to continue the granting and programs at the level that the communities have uh, come to know them to be at. Right. And so that's why we're really focused on fundraising. Um, I, I say this often but your website is really great you've done Thank a great you. job and you can really check out all these things so please go to the clockwit biosphere.org and you can check out initiatives of the biosphere region research grants ways to give and check out this awesome new building it's so cool and i'm going to play a song one more song and then we'll come back and talk about uh well whatever you want to talk about i think it makes sense to me i think there'll be lots of love there in the biosphere shack when it's open it's no shack though it's beautiful it's quite stunning. I mean, if it's going to be exactly as I see it, right? All right. Now, the next thing on our list is, is there anything else you'd like to share? I love that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What else, Colin? What's going on? Well, we've got a, a pretty exciting thing happening at the Tofino Visitor Center starting on Friday. I'll just backtrack to give the origin of this exciting thing. It's called the Truth, Honor, and the Way Forward Exhibit. And so this is the first time it'll have been up in Tofino. It actually got its start over the last couple of years at Ukulit Secondary School. And it's a bunch of um, amazing learning opportunities that were co-created by students and staff um, around the uh, September 30th day for National, wait, National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Yeah. Yeah, so what's happened is, um, for example, this fall, over the month of September, a bunch of um, really neat creative learning opportunities happened um, at school uh, and, and in community, but focused on bringing truth and reconciliation into the classroom. So, for example, English students were working on poetry that uh, dove into some of the complexities of, um, of residential schools and trauma and, and survival. Um, there's a lot of cool, like, uh, orange shirt making, using silk screens to make orange shirts. There's some really interesting research, sort of looking into the national calls for um, action or calls to action. So students could look at what those are and then do actual research into things like government policy or history or, you know, more contemporary stuff like what can you do to combat trauma. And so the exhibit was made up of what they call artifacts of learning, mm -hmm. basically just all the cool stuff these, these students did. <laughs> yeah. um, and they made it into a, a public gallery for people to participate in um, over the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation and the days following. And now we're very lucky to get to bring this up to Tofino so the people in Tofino can come to the Tofino Visitor Center and check out all this really cool work. How, I saw pictures of it when it was in the Euclid Secondary School. How is there room for all of that lovely stuff, the artifacts of learning, in the tourism center? Well, I'll, uh, I was there packing it up last night, and I was asking myself the same question. <laughs> right. So I think what, what we'll end up doing, we've got it all, and I think it's going to be, uh, they're moving it in today, and they'll kind of look at what's available in the space and, and see how we can fit uh, maybe an abridged version in there. Um, I think we should clear Brad out of his office and use his <laughs> office as like an annexed uh, area. Just kidding, Brad. Don't worry. 
they're not coming for you. But it would be for a good cause. Is there a cost to go see this, or can anybody go see any time? Anybody can go see. It's not any time. It's from 9 to 5. I guess it's pretty much the, the visitor center yeah. hours. Um, we do have a lot of different ways that people can give uh, to support. All the proceeds when you donate um, will be directed towards future versions of this event. So just going right back into the school, right back into the program to help keep the uh, the reconciliation action happening locally and, and the healing action. Will locally. this program keep growing? Like, Will there be continued additions of learning artifacts that will add to the display um i think it will st like continue to evolve because every year there's you know students just producing more and more really neat learning um and and yeah so keeping it fresh i, I don't think it's going to grow like getting bigger and bigger in a right. quantitative sense but yeah certainly in a qualitative sense and um yeah there's a partnership with a, a foundation called the legacy of hope and they help provide some other really professional looking displays to co sort of go alongside what the students have created and so we're hoping to keep that partnership going our rock star teammate jason sam i just realized i hadn't given him his shout out this man this man puts the team on his back here like he he definitely has has just gone above and beyond and you know he's been involved in Euclid secondary school before joining cbt so yeah, yeah he's just such a, a beautiful bridge between uh, you know the organizations and, and the communities he does a lot of great stuff yeah go jason yeah go jason uh my question was going to be if it, there isn't enough stuff or so if there's so much stuff and you, you kind of got to pick and choose and that sort of thing um what will you do with the rest of the things? Will this ever go on tour? Will, will it go to Port Alberni? Will it go? I don't think that's been the vision, uh, but we were really thankful for the SD70 uh, trustees coming out to see the exhibit yeah. on uh, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. And it's definitely got their interest and they're looking at how they could do a, a, a similar program and learning in the schools in Port Alberni. Because it seems like something that is a wonderful way for peer-to-peer -peer education. Absolutely. And, and to take it back to the Biosphere Center, I think that's why we ah. see the need to have a, a larger space where we could have exhibits up for a larger amount of time and have yeah. the space to display the, the amazing learning that the students have done. Was it all student created? Yeah, it's, it's student led work. Absolutely. And uh, the poetry is absolutely uh, just so so inspiring and breathtaking uh a number of students are going to be sharing their poetry at the event exhibit uh opening when it's at tourism tofino so that's this friday from three till six and yeah just so, so in awe of their uh, amazing work do you know you would be very welcome if they were interested uh maybe not on that friday because i know that's already a big day but i would love to have that on the radio we can pass that along to jason yeah, totally. heather hendry who's been a, a big, she's great she's amazing the poet laureate yeah. he's got a lot of good stuff going on all right is there anything else that we need to know about this uh, i'll i'll put it into the calendar so i'll keep repeating the hours for people so that they can go check it out yeah the 13th the exhibit will be open starting this friday uh, and then the 13th through to the 19th that's great that's a lot of work for a week hey <laughs> well worth it but yeah the students have been working so hard it's just awesome to be able to showcase their work with the community and yeah have, it'll be fun for them to take their friends and family to the the center and check it all out absolutely really cool okay uh i'm just gonna play one more song and then we'll come back and see if there's anything else that we want to share with folks uh, we'll remind you how to get a hold of people at the biosphere trust because you might want to look at grants and the email or the email the website is clockwitbiosphere.org uh, what's brewing in the biosphere? That is what we have been talking about with my guests, Rebecca Hurwitz and Colin Robinson. We need to talk about one more thing. I'm sure of it. Yeah, I wanted to give a quick plug for our newest uh, education award, the Lifelong Learner Award. And so this is a new uh, scholarship that we've just announced, and we're accepting applications right now through till uh, into November uh, for uh, students who are not new graduates, but students who are lifelong learners and are continuing to pursue their education. So it's a one-time grant of $4,000, and you can find all the info on our website. Does it have to be in relation to a, a, a institution of learning? Learning? It has to be an institution of learning, could be trades, could be language, could be uh, 
a master's degree. Uh, we're pretty wide open on that, right. uh, but we want to know that folks have been living in the region for three years and are pursuing their educational goals. What if it was an educational goal of someone who wanted to transition from their job to a new job and they needed a certain type of education, maybe even like a steam ticket or something like that? Would that yeah, be if it, eligible? If they are at a ed- education institution and uh, yeah, right, yeah, absolutely. Or uh, what would be your closest one? Uh, North Island College. North Island College, absolutely. All kinds of stuff going on. And of course, the usual process applies. You would just come in. Is there a deadline for the grant? There is a deadline in November. Check the website, and then you can link to the application form there, or you can phone the office, and we can give you a hand. And then again, do you have a year? To, to utilize it if you apply? It's a one-time grant, and as long as folks are enrolled then yeah. and their program is uh, underway, that's what we're looking for with this one. I love it. Thanks for all the good stuff that you do. Thank you for giving us an opportunity to share and for lifting up our work. Yeah, I'm really excited about uh, seeing this report because I remember last time there was quite a bit of excitement, and I just think it'll give everyone a good perspective of what's going on and what has happened. I mean, we've gone through some strange times. Absolutely, and I think about those strange times and all of the the COVID response action tables and different meetings and how quickly the, the region came together to address that. Yeah. And we all talk about uh, building back better, and I think this report gives us some um, feedback on where we're at and, and if, in fact, we're building back better and, and how we might want to work together more. Colin, what do you see? Uh, what are you excited about that's coming up with your work? Hmm. Well, I think right now I'm getting to work on a lot of um, interesting sort of collaborative research work with my new um, co-worker, Janessa Dornstadter. She joined our team earlier this year, and we've got a pretty cool gathering actually coming up just next week, October 18th. It's going to be a, a gathering of environmental organizations and First Nations in the region. And the goal is to sit down and talk about each other's priorities, just learn what's going on in each other's communities, what are we working on, what are the sort of shared needs or gaps, potential areas of collaboration, Um, but mostly just, you know, continue to build relationships because so often people working on similar things are are still kind of isolated in this in this region. Um, So it's going to be at the Tinwis. And uh, yeah, you can give us uh, a call at the CVT office or email us. Any of our staff will be able to direct you towards more information. Awesome. Thank you both for coming in and making the time and letting me pick music. Thank you, Cam, for having us. <laughs> yeah, uh, I look forward to, I, I think I'll see you in two weeks and we'll uh, hopefully have all that information. I'm quite excited. A little bit of a Christmas feeling going on when I think of how excited I am about it. All right, now, none of this happens. None of this good work happens. None of the nature, none of any of it happens if people don't stand up and protect it. And uh, here's a song by my aforementioned favorite band about a lady who did just that. Uh, what's brewing in the biosphere right now? Betty Kay. Talk to you soon.